this is Baltic Aviation Academy and today we talk to Marius Brazis, five years flying as steward, senior steward on Boeing 737, Fokker 50, Fokker 100 and Dash 8 aircrafts. Hello Marius, we know that before starting your career as flight attendant, you had been studying automotive transport engineering, bachelor and master. So what did move you from the roads to the sky highways? Um, actually it was my dream and uh, I was on uh, my trip back home from Japan. I was sitting in an airplane flying over Siberia. I was watching the cabin crew working and I finally decided that it's now or never. And when I came back in uh, one week I have quit from my previous job and started to look uh, cabin crew positions in Lithuania. So it was so impulsive? Yes it was. Could you tell us what are the most attractive features of being a cabin crew member? Uh, probably it's that you never fly to the same destination in the same week. You n almost never meet the same cabin crew or the flight crew on board. You never see the same passengers on board and there's never the same day as it was uh, previously. So it's more or less uh, each day you face uh, some challenges which you have to cope and uh, that is the most interesting part of the job. So could you say that this is a career for adventure people? Exactly, yes. And could you tell us what was the most memorable flight you have worked and why was it so memorable? Probably it was the flight when uh, there was a uh, Lithuanian president Valdas Adamkus on board. There was a charter flight from Vilnius to Brussels and on the way back. Uh, it was the memorable because it's uh, of the very high service level. Uh, you are responsible for a lot of things and you have a lot of things to do in a very short time. Uh, also, you meet interesting people. You see how they live, how they, how they act without uh, uh, being in public area, without the cameras. It was a very, very interesting experience. And can you tell us something more about the flight or is there some confidentiality level that you cannot... There is confidentiality level actually, yes, and uh, this is it what I can say. Can you tell us something about difficult clients? Have you had any difficult, snappish and aggressive clients? Absolutely, yes. When you fly a lot, the five years, uh, I've seen a lot of passengers in my life. Um, there was people who were aggressive or offensive on flights, mostly their flights from, uh, let's say, uh, Dublin or London. On those flights you are always uh, careful when you sell some alcohol uh, to the passengers and keeping them in the level and behavior as, as it's supposed to be. And what are the measures that cabin crew can apply for handling difficult clients, like aggressive situations? Well, let's start from that, that you can firstly say, uh, like give a notice for him first of all to stop behaving in such uh, bad behavior if he cannot do it or he don't want to do it uh, the final decision it's up to the captain and uh, there was a situations when uh, the police authorities are meeting the flights upon arrival that is very expensive for that passenger who was behaving bad because uh, that small car with the uh, mm, red lights who are meeting the flight is very expensive. And do you have handcuffs in the plane? We do. Okay, and you can use them? Yes, but in a very last moment. Okay, so it's very rare occasions. Yeah, absolutely, and yes. was there any chance you used those or? I didn't, but there are, I, I know the stories when they were used. And can you tell us any extraordinary story about extraordinary clients that still brings a smile? Mostly that probably was uh, the business class passengers. They are always more demanding. They know the service level it should be in the business class. And uh, always I remember those who are uh, saying uh, on leaving the airplane, thank you and that was a really good service. And even they, uh, when they compare with some uh, big companies like uh, Emirates or Etihad and they say you are on the same level or you did a great job. Those passengers are always rememberable. Can you see they are demanding. Can you mention any extraordinary demands that you had to fulfill? Mm, I think it was more that uh, service has to be very precise. 
So that means that uh, you have to know how to bring the cup, where the spoon has to stand and so on, so in, in that level. So it's like in a high-class restaurant? Absolutely, yes. And we also know that uh, the primary function for the cabin crew members is um, helping with the um, safety operations. So was there any time the uh, situation, that uh, emergency situation happened? Well, I wouldn't say that it was emergency situations, but um, for example, uh, the things are happening frequently on board is when the passenger got sick. So you have to use the um, safety equipment which is on board, for example, oxygen. Uh, but another situation is when uh, the airplane cannot land somewhere in the airport because of the bad weather, icy conditions of the runway. They are happening, especially in Vilnius, uh, when the foggy weather is coming in the autumn. So you have to be ready when you start your work to come back in, uh, not today or even a few, in a few days, when you land somewhere else and you have to come back a little bit later. And how usually are the relationships among the crew? Do pilots get along with cabin crew or are the relationships between flight and cabin crew more friendly or more professional? I would say more professional, but of course when you work uh, long in the company you always meet some friends well, with whom you can uh, go out to parties after your duties. And do you still keep in touch with the cabin crew you used to fly with right now? or I do, yes. You do. do flight attendants have enough time between their flights to actually visit and see the place? Or is it just flight after flight? It depends on the schedule, but um, mostly the flights I was operating are turnaround flights, so-called. Which means that you fly to the destination, have a short turnaround and flying back uh, to your base. But sometimes uh, you have uh, lay layovers in uh, European cities where you spend from 12 up to 48 hours. So then you can uh, visit the city, have a walk, have a nice dinner in the restaurant and so on. And which city did you like the most that you had this layover of 12 or 48 hours? Bergen. Bergen. Yes, in Norway it's absolutely beautiful city and uh, the nature is very nice. Area. I agree with you. And um, how would you describe the job behind the scenes? What are the biggest challenges that cabin crew uh, wannabes really don't, really don't consider usually? Uh, first of all, you have to be very flexible because each day you meet uh, a lot of different passengers. So that means you have to be very calm when you deal with the situations. Uh, First aid situations are really demanding of your professionalism. What you do, you have to know really mm, good. Um, probably that is the most biggest thing. But flexibility is that one when you have to be ready to do things now on that exact moment. And what about the relationships with clients? Any interesting stories? Any numbers from girls? <laughs> Yeah, I, I believe the girls are getting more numbers than the guys on board, but there are some situations like that, yeah, absolutely. And was it hard to get a job as a flight attendant? I would say it was, because you have to pass uh, through the very intense uh, uh, screening. First of all, you have to apply with your CV and very beautiful pictures. <laughs> Afterwards, you have a group discussions interview. When you pass that, you have a, a personal interview, one-to-one -one with your interviewer. Afterwards, you have to pass a medical commission to receive a medical certificate. And then you have another one, final interview, when you already know what is what, and uh, they tell you the final decision. Are you in or not? Could you tell us more about the main requirements for flight attendant work? like? What do you need to have to, be, to even be considered in the first place? You know, first of all, you have to be 18 years old. It's a minimum requirement. Then you have to have at least high school diploma. Uh, to know as much languages as you can. It's a very good if you know them. Um, and you have to have some customer service uh, background in your CV. And how long the, did it take you to find a job in flight attendant career uh, after quitting your previous job? I did it in one month. 
in one month. That's impressive. Yes, if you really want to, it's, uh, I believe you can do it. Okay, and do you have any advices for wannabes? I would say if you are um, tired of working from 8 to 5, go for this job and it will be, and it will be for you. Oh, thank you for an interesting interview. Thank you.